Okay, DCM example number one. All right, uh, so we have a wall given by this, uh, the, brown, the brown lines. This is the corner of a room, and uh, it's just a wall. And then swinging out of the wall is this black door here. Okay, and on our black door, we have this pink clock. Okay, with the minute hand, this blue minute hand pointing right there. And uh, the minute hand makes an angle of phi with the vertical. And our door makes an angle of theta with the wall, with the brown wall. So we have a, uh, a red basis, a red orthonormal unit basis <laughs> uh, here. And EX points in the direction of uh, this wall here. EY points in the direction of this wall here. And EZ points up, up the walls at that vertex where they, where they intersect. So remember, each of these bases vectors is a length of one uh, unit vectors, and they form right angles with, with each other. Uh, EX, let's talk through EX. So EX points along the door. It points along the door. Uh, e -wa uh, EZ points straight up, points in the same direction as our capital EZ. And EY is equal to EZ crossed with EX would get us EY. And if the door were to be out here, say, say the door swung out that far, well, then EX would just be pointing here. That would be EX, this would be EZ, and then EY would be like that, okay? So it's fixed to the door. Uh, e, the reference frame of the door. Uh, the, the yellow basis is uh, fixed to the reference frame of the minute hand. Okay, so UX. UX points along the minute hand. Um, UY. Uh, UZ. Let's talk about UZ. UZ is perpendicular to the door, and it goes straight back. And then UY is UZ crossed with UX, and it points in that direction. Um, a little easier way to see that is if we look head on. So if this is our eye and we look straight on to the, uh, the door, then it would look like this. And we can see that UX points along the minute hand. UZ is into the page. And UY is equal to UZ crossed with UX. Same thing with our green basis. Points, EX points straight to the right. It goes along the door, the base of the door. EZ points straight up, and EY goes into the page. Okay, so that's the setup. It's our, it's our corner of the room with a door with a clock on it. Okay, and what we're going to want to do is write uh, our bases in terms of each other. So we're going to start with uh, red and green, and then we'll move on to green and yellow, and then we'll move on to red and yellow. That's going to be the big one. So part one, let's write the green basis in terms of the red basis. Remember, the red basis is fixed to ground, or the wall. The wall and ground are the same thing. This basis is fixed to ground in the reference frame of ground. The green basis is fixed to the reference frame of the door. So what rotations do we have to perform? We have to perform a three rotation by 90 degrees and another three rotation by negative theta. Um, It'll become a little clearer. Uh, I have it written down a little better down below, so we'll get to it. Uh, but let's first look at this. So how do I know if a rotation is positive or negative? Very important. Um, well, you do this by pointing your right hand thumb along the axis you're rotating about, and the directions your fingers curl is a positive direction. So say you have a basis here, this XYZ basis, and you point your thumb along the Z axis. So you're rotating about the Z. So a positive direction would be, well, your fingers can only curl one way and they go this way. So that's a positive three rotation, right? Because the thumb points in the positive Z direction. This is a positive Z rotation. So what if we have our thumb now pointed in this direction is now pointed in that direction, which is the negative Y direction, right? Positive Y is this, this way, but our thumb's pointing this way. There's only one way for our fingers to curl. It will be this way. So since our thumb is pointing in the negative y direction, this is a negative y rotation or a negative 2 rotation. Okay, so if we're looking at 
uh, our first rotation, which is a three rotation by 90 degrees. This is what we start with. Okay, this is where we're starting. Um, this is the same picture drawn above. I just copied it down here. You can see that we need this EX to line up with this EX. Um, and I'm going to do it in two moves. You could do it in one move. I'm going to do it in two moves just for clarity. So first, I'm going to rotate EX all the way 90 degrees. So that points along the base of this, this door. So you can see if we do a three rotation, we're rotating like this. Now EX points here and EY points back. Also along the, uh, the base of this uh, wall but in the negative direction, right? So EX now points this way, EY points this way, and EZ points this way. Well, now we have to do one more rotation to get this basis to match this basis. What do we have to do now? Now we have to do a negative rotation. We have to go this way. We have to do this rotation by an angle of theta. And if we do that, you'll see it down here. If we do a rotation, a negative rotation about a negative three rotation by theta that will align our EX along the door. Um, EZ didn't change. EX is now along the door and these two bases now match. Easy as that. So let's calculate the DCM for this. So what were the two rotations we did? Well, first we did a three rotation by 90 degrees and then we did a three rotation again by negative theta. Right? So this is our fundamental three rotation matrix we did last video. And here's our fundamental three rotation matrix again. Right, We only did three rotations. Uh, <laughs> fundamental three rotations uh, for this first part. Uh, but this, is what our, this was our first rotation. First we did 90 and then this is our second rotation. We did negative theta. This is where we were. We were at the red basis and we were manipulating the red basis to get to the green basis. So this is where we were, this is where we're going. All right, uh, we can plug in our, let's look at this first basis here and see how we get to here. Cosine of 90 is zero, um, sine of 90 is one, so negative sine 90 is negative one, sine of 90 is one, and cosine of 90 is zero. Okay, that's that. And this side, uh, this side, is a uh, cosine of a negative angle is just cosine of the angle, cosine of the angle. Uh, sine of a negative angle is a negative sine of the angle. Okay, that's some trig properties. Go take a look at your unit circle and prove it to yourself. It's it's true. Uh, so negative sine of negative theta is just sine theta. Sine of negative theta will give you negative sine theta, and cosine of negative theta will give you cosine of theta. And then if we do the matrix multiplication, and I'll talk through this first one just so we're clear about it, but I'm not going to do this every single time just because we're learning for now. I'll, I'll, I'll talk through it. So we take this row, multiply by this column, and we only pick up this term times this term, and that'll give us sine theta here. Then we go to the next one, this row times this column, and we only pick up this times this, which gives us this, cosine theta. And then this times this will give us zero, zero. Then we go to the next row. Then we do this times this, and what do we pick up? We pick up cosine theta times negative one. Well, that gives us negative cosine theta. Then we go to the next one, row times column, and we just pick up the sine theta, which is here. And then we do row times column, and we get zero. And then last one, we do row times column. That'll give us zero, zero. And then we pick up the one there. One times one is one. And there we go, we did it. This is our relationship between the red and the green basis. And this is our this is our DCM, our direction cosine matrix that gets us there. And uh, here's a check. So I just wrote the superposition of the two bases on top of each other uh, to prove to ourselves that this is really what's happening. Um, so this this basis here is if you were to look at this guy straight down from above. If your eye was looking at it straight from the top. That's what you would see here, okay? And we can see, well, what do we do? Uh, let's look at EX. And I did this in a previous video, so I'm gonna go quicker through it. We went in the positive EX direction by X and then the positive EY direction by the gray Y. What's the gray X? That's sine theta 
and y is cosine theta. So ex is equal to sine theta ex plus cosine theta ey. And then we didn't move at all in the ez direction, right? So zero ez. We stayed in the plane of ex ey. And then let's look at ey. Well, we went in the negative ex direction by this blue x, and then we went in the positive ey direction by the blue y. So what does that give us? That gives us, uh, what's our x? That's cosine theta. So negative cosine theta, because we went in the negative ex direction, negative cosine theta, and then plus sine theta, sine theta ey is zero ez. And then ez, if we look at our final here, you can see that ez and ez, those never changed. Those stayed exactly the same from beginning to end. So they're equal to each other. So that's exactly what this says. EZ is equal to EZ. That's what the one tells us. All right, so it worked. We did it. That's, we, did, we did our first part DCM. Let's go to the next part. Uh, so now let's write the yellow basis in terms of the green basis. So remember, the green basis is fixed in the reference frame of the door, and it swings out with the door. The yellow basis also swings with the door, but it also rotates with the clock, with the minute hand. So what rotations do we have to perform? Well, we're going to have to do a two rotation by negative 90, a two rotation again by phi, and then a one rotation by negative 90. And again, I have it written out better here for you to see. So this is where we're starting from, and this is the result of the rotation, a two rotation by negative 90. So two rotation by negative 90 is about the EY, and a negative rotation will be in this direction, like that. And when we do that, EZ is going to come down and point in this direction, and EY is going to come up to where EZ was and point in that direction, which is exactly what happens here, right? So that's our two rotation by negative 90. So now you can, the reason we did this is because I wanted to align it with the vertical, which aligns it with this blue dotted line that phi is measured off of. So now that EX is aligned with the vertical, now we can just rotate it by phi. See how that works? So we aligned it with the vertical first, and then now we're rotating it down by phi, which will align our EX and UX. And you can see that in the next rotation right here. So a two rotation by phi, um, since we are already aligned in our green EX with the vertical, we just have to rotate it down by phi. And the way we do that is a two rotation about this guy right here, uh, a positive two rotation by phi. And you can see that results in this basis right here. So now EX and UX, those are parallel. Those are now aligned. What's the last thing we have to do to get these, these bases to, you know, match? Well, EY is now, is at the moment pointing in this direction, but we want it in the plane of the door and pointing down here, right? So how do we do that? Well, we're going to have to rotate it uh, in a, what is that? A negative 90 degree rotation about EX, right? We're going to have to rotate it like that. And that'll swing down EY so that it uh, points in that direction, which is what we do right here. So after performing that one rotation, uh, it did exactly what I said. EY comes down here. And then now EZ comes and is in the direction that EY was. It points back, right? Uh, perpendicular to the plane of the door. Um, points in that direction now. So now these two are aligned. So here's a rotation. We did three rotations this time, but we do the exact same thing, right? This is where we were. We started at green and we were rotating the green basis to get to where we were going was the yellow basis. Our first rotation was a two rotation, a fundamental two rotation by negative 90 degrees. Our second rotation was a fundamental two rotation again by phi. And then our third rotation was a fundamental one rotation by negative 90. And that's it. This is our first rotation, second rotation, third rotation. And then we just perform the matrix multiplication. I'm not going to go through it. Uh, you can pause the video here and look through it. Okay, I'm going to keep going. And what you'd end up with after doing all the matrix multiplication is this guy right here. Okay, let's go to part three. So let's write... Um, 
the yellow basis in terms of the red basis. So what rotations do we have to do for that? Um, well, we already know all the rotations, right? We already did, we already went from red to green in part one, and then we went from green to yellow in part two, right? And here were our bases for that. So if this is our first rotation to get to green, and this is our second rotation to go from green to yellow, then we set it up exactly the same way. This is our first rotation. This is our second rotation. This is part one. Oh, let me let that go away. This is part one. This is part two. Okay. And then we just multiply them and we did it. <laughs> so now we have a relationship between our red basis and our yellow basis. Uh, and it doesn't get much crazier than that. If you followed this video, then you'll be pretty solid for anything we do. Um, and one last little note is uh, you can reverse the order by taking the transpose of the rotation matrix. So a transpose means you keep the diagonals the same, and then all the off diagonals you swap, okay? So diagonal stays the same, and then you swap these two, these two swap, you swap these two, and then you swap these two. Essentially, your rows are becoming columns, and your columns are becoming rows. And if you take the transpose, then you can swap these guys. And then now you have the, rot the relationship going from red in terms of yellow. Right? This was yellow in terms of red, and then this is red in terms of yellow. So that's also a useful property that we'll, we'll take it. And uh, that's it. It's the end of this video. So I'll uh, see you in the next one.